Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Mr. Robot Season 3, Episode 8, Don't Delete Me. Uh, this video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Mr. Robot, so I have to start with a spoiler warning for Mr. Robot up to Season 3, Episode 8. If you haven't seen up to this point, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So, this is the first filler episode that we get in Season 3. And I think that's actually quite a good thing. I think that we waited all the way until episode 8 to get a filler episode because in season 2 we got like 4 filler episodes within the first 6 episodes <laughs> of the season. So this is actually quite good that the season has been so consistently great. Uh, I think episode 4... Three was a flashback episode. I wouldn't call that filler because it's stuff that we needed to know. Episode four was more of a setup episode. I wouldn't say it was filler. This episode, I would say, is filler because it didn't need to be as long as it was. It pushed the. It didn't push the story forward much at all. Like it, what it did for the story could have been accomplished in like ten minutes. That being said, I don't hate the episode. I know a lot of people were like, oh, <laughs> well, it's not filler. But I, I don't think it sucks. Like, I didn't think it was a bad episode. There were some really powerful character moments in this episode. Uh, but still, even with that, it didn't need to be as long as it was. And it pretty much didn't need to exist. So, I mean, but again, there's stuff about it I really like. So, I, I'm not saying that it's a bad episode. Uh, it's just, could have been shorter. Anyway, so let me jump into it. So, it's interesting that uh, last week, as I said, like the episode uh, 7, we got barely any Elliot. Like, he was only in it for, like, two minutes, and then it switched over to Mr. Robot, but even he wasn't in it that much, so he was barely appeared. Uh, but this episode is complete Elliot. Like, the entire episode is Elliot. Uh, we don't really follow any outside of his perspective for the whole episode. We see a few characters that he interacts with, like Angela and Darlene, but we don't see... Other outside characters like White Rose or Price or Dom or anyone like that, we stick within um, Elliot's sort of mindset, which is, you know, that's fine. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I did like the way the episode opened with the flashback with, I presume, is when his father died. It's actually, it does fill in a lot of gaps on why he feels so guilty about it and why he's manufact manu uh, manufacturing a version of his father to be his alter ego because... It plays on the total guild because we see that he's in an arm brace. Uh, so this is, we know this is shortly after the incident we've seen in the first two seasons about him, uh, his father pushing him out the window and his father's trying to apologize to it for, uh, you know, for doing that to him. And he's um, not accepting, he's not having it, he's like, screw it. And when his father like collapses and basically could die, he just goes off and watches a movie. <laughs> kind of a real dick thing. And I think this is what sort of stunted his growth and what sort of caused him to become more of the antisocial uh, sort of person that he has grown up to be. And it's also why maybe why he has a lot of um, sort of unresolved mental issues, I should say. So this is sort of the heart of it, and this sort of explains a lot. And I think it's... Not only guilt, but it's guilt, unresolved guilt. It's guilt that he never confronted. I get the idea that, like, for most of his life, consciously for the forefront, he tried to be played off like he didn't do anything wrong in that situation. Like, he doesn't outwardly, openly regret uh, just leaving his father there to die. But I think it's part of his subconscious did like really regret it and that's what sort of spun off and created this duality in him but of course um i know nothing about psychology and this the show doesn't really play fat uh you know phase plays kind of fast and loose with real life psychology anyway so i'm just spitballing here but this it's it's what makes sense to me and i think that's what the this, this show is getting back so either way i do think this was a crucial sort of moment in uh, this whole elliot storyline uh so it was really interesting interesting uh seeing that and i do believe 
Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up the dates of these movies uh, that are playing. They had, like, uh, it was such a nostalgia. Like, you know, they you know they went out of their way to dress it up like a, you know, late 90s uh, thing with all of the uh, different um, movies playing in the background, like Shallow Grave. They went to see. Shallow Grave is a huge step down from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> and the last flashback in season two. Um, Elliot went to see uh, Pulp Fiction. Stargate was playing, so that was clearly 94. Um, Shallow Grave was kind of an indie film. I, I was a bit surprised that it would be playing there. Um, hold on. I'm just looking up. Okay, so the movie Babe is 1995. I thought Shallow Grave was later than that. Hold on. I'm looking up Shallow Grave. 1994. Okay, so it would have came to America in 95. Okay, so this is a year later from the scene we got in season two where they were at the store and he conned them and it's like, oh, let's go see Pulp Fiction. So, <laughs> so this is, yeah, so this is 95 apparently is when his father died. So, okay. But yeah, you could tell they had all the, you know, movie posters and they were purposely playing this out there, which, you know, it, it's kind of cool they could recapture that time period, but on the other hand, it's like, Nostalgia, 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 but <laughs> it's not too bad. It was pretty interesting. Um, so anyway, I love the scene that we get with um, Elliot and Darlene at the start. I mean, because basically, we don't know this, but this is Elliot uh, basically saying his goodbyes to Darlene. Like, at first, he's, like, freaking her out because he's, he's freaking out uh, because... Basically, he's deciding to kill himself. He's already decided by Dar by the time Darlene showed up. That's clear because he's sort of clearing everything out. But he's sort of explaining why because he says nothing like it's. This is he is totally feeling guilty and regret for this because he's like this is completely my fault um, for all the this terrorist destruction, all thousands of people dying, and he cannot live with this. And he's sure like even though his side of personality wouldn't do this he thinks that mr robot would and this is exactly what mr robot would. and it's funny because i don't think he's aware this elliot person is aware that mr robot i mean he's kind of aware he told mr robot they're duping you but i don't think he knows the full extent i don't think he knows that this was tyrell's plan not his and he says even if it wasn't his plan to blow up 71 buildings that he got what he wanted out of it um so so he believes that the only way to end it, to stop future stuff like ha this happening is to kill himself, is to kill Mr. Robot, and he does that by killing himself. He said he tried everything, he tried therapy, he tried drugs, he tried even tried going to prison. Uh, but the thing is, like, he kind of tried, except for drugs, <laughs> um, he kind of tried all those things half-assed. Like, he just went to prison on these charges that were very easy to get off of. He could own up to 5'9", and then he he would never get out of prison. doesn't matter what the Dark Army, what strings White Rose tried to pull, he'd, he'd be stuck in a hole for the rest of his life. So he could go full tilt on that if he wanted to. But I suppose um, suicide was a better option for him <laughs> in his eyes. It was more, I guess, more foolproof. And again, therapy, again, he kind of went half-assed with it. He didn't really go to Krista enough. He could have uh, pursued that avenue more, which I do hope we do see him doing. Uh, but it, I think it totally makes sense. I totally bought that he'd want to kill himself at this stage. Uh, it, it completely makes sense that the guilt of this would be overwhelming. And I love how when he's yelling at Darlene, he even says, it's because I fucking want it. He acknowledges that part of even his Elliot perceptive wants to be Mr. Robot, even though he's totally against what Mr. Robot did and he's feeling guilty about the deaths. He's, he's not willing to give up Mr. Robot entirely. And he feels guilty about that. He feels guilty about the fact that he wants Mr. Robot around. Because this is what Mr. Robot uh, does. Now, I still think that there's uh, going to be a possibility that Elliot and Mr. Robot will sort of reconcile and come together. And um, I think Mr. Robot feels a bit more... Especially what we saw in the last episode where Irving took him to that rich party and was like, these are the people in charge, they're always in charge. I think that's going to completely 
flip and change Mr. Robot's uh, whole worldview. And I think they actually could possibly be in the same side if they only communicate with each other, which is kind of irony. Which, you know, again, this episode did really little to push the story forward because it didn't get into any of that. It didn't get into any of the investigation with Dom. It didn't get into even the therapy with Krista. It didn't get into that. So that's why, I've, you know, thought it was kind of a, an aside and filler, basically. But there, you know, certain scenes I like, like the one with Darlene, and how he was basically saying, oh, we'll watch this movie, and after he freaked her out, he was trying to calm her down, and he was really connecting uh, with her, like, as brother and sister, which was really cool to see, and he was doing this because he thought it would be the last time he'd ever see her, because he was sure he'd kill himself, so he was like, oh, we'll, we'll hang out, and blah, 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 because he knew we'd never have to, <laughs> basically, so that was, that was pretty nice, that was pretty touching, so then, you know, he, he gives away his dog, uh, to a neighbor, apparently, that looked after his dog before, which, you know, never seen this guy before but whatever and then he takes all his clothes to get burned and blah 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 and then you know he before he kills himself he goes to see uh, Mobley and Trenton's uh, surviving family now I do really like that they specifically played off of this Mobley and Trenton thing and that specifically is weighing heavily in this mind that he's like very feeling very like down like it's his fault that they died which Basically, it is because he's the one that got them involved in this in the first place. Uh, so he's kind of right to feel guilty about it. And, he think, and he's saying that these are two good. And I'm glad because I think I was worried they would sweep this under the rug in LA because he, he was always kind of dismissive about Mobley and Trenton not really caring what was happening with him. It was Darlene who was mostly caring about them and what's up with them when Elliot was kind of didn't really care but I think their deaths and the fact that they were blamed for something that he they you know he knows that they didn't do is enough to sort of weigh on him heavily so he goes to see their families and you know maybe his brothers a dick to him but uh Trenton's uh, father is sort of like thank you for saying nice things about my girl but of course he's being per persecuted so he wants to leave New York possibly it sounds like he wants to leave the country so I wouldn't be surprised if he was moving to Canada um, but I don't know that's just my guess but <sighs> so then after that he goes to the beach to kill himself and this is where this the episode really goes downhill for me is the storyline with Trenton's younger brother <sighs> I really did not like this. This this reminds me... There's so many, like, art house and, like, arty sort of films and, like, you know, indie stuff that try to do, oh, let's have this little kid go with the main character and they'll connect and bond and blue 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 And it's such a pretentious cliche that I just see. It's like the indie directors go to, let's be artsy, let's throw in a little kid in there. And it's such a easy, you know... Such a cliche, it's hard to describe, but it's such a cliche trick that it's just pretentious, basically, I think. You have to do more than just let's add a kid and have them bond with our main character, and I don't think this episode does. It came off as a typical trope in that regard. And, you know, I mean, there were some good aspects to it, like, you know, going to the movies and he's reminded they get the M&Ms and the popcorn again, but... I don't know, just, that character seemed really fake. When I first saw him, I was like, okay, this is another construct of Elliot's mind. This is like a Mr. Robot type thing. Especially the way he was talking at first, and when Elliot's like, how did you get here? He's like, I don't know. I don't know my way back, blah, blah, blah. And apparently he did know his way back, because then he took Elliot in the shortcut back to his house. So, I don't know, that seemed really weird. And if it is revealed in the future that this isn't really Trenton's younger brother, that this is another construct of Elliot's uh, mind, and I will, in retrospect, forgive this episode. But taking it on face value as this being actual Trenton's younger brother, I think it's really dumb. It's really out of place. It, it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, well, the way the character is behaving seems really fake, I should say, because it makes sense. Obviously, <laughs> like this, such a uh, open cliche. But the way he's behaving seems really fake and seems really contrived. I know I use that word a lot, but it applies so much here. Especially how he's like, "Oh, well, let's go to the movies." That just so happens to link up to the flashback we saw at the beginning of the episode. Ugh. And why would Elliot take this kid to see the movie? It's just it doesn't 
ring true it rings like a very contrived art house oh let's have this kid and our main character bond and especially when he runs out of the movie and he runs the moss, moss um why why would he be there how would elliot know that he's there just because he talked about taking off his shoes and uh, it, just the whole thing seemed really like unrealistic really like let's do a typical art house kid bonding thing it's just i did not like it at all um but like the one aspect i did kind of like was the uh, the more back to the future references uh this again the back to the future uh and particularly when he's standing in line and the, the people are describing the plot and everyone has a different way of describing the plot but you know they talk about like oh it's an alternate future where someone goes back to the future to change the past and someone's like no no it's, it's more simple blah blah I don't know, like, people after last week's episode were saying they didn't think there would be time travel in the show, that there was all just a red herring, but all these, they're just shoving all these Back to the Future references in their face, and plus, the way they got into the detail about alternate timelines and histories and changing things makes me think, it, I am more convinced than ever that this that we will see time travel in this show. I don't know, maybe not in a way it was presented, maybe it's you know, different than we might think, which I actually think is the case. I don't think it's going to be what anyone suspects, but we're definitely going to see time travel. I, there's no way they throw in all these Back to the Future references and specifically get into the specifics about, about time travel and have that parallel universe drop at the start of the season without seeing anything like that in the show. I'll, in fact, I will even go as far as to say I'll be incredibly disappointed if we don't, because come on, we kind of have to at this stage. But anyway, so after, you know, the the contrived nonsense about the the little boy. In fact, the whole time with the scenes with the little boy, I was just like, come on, get on with it. This is what I'm talking about, about stuff. This is basically why I'm calling this a filler episode. Because, first of all, it didn't need to be there at all. And secondly, it definitely did not need to be as long as it was. And I was expecting, like the boy them to actually get into some information about the plot that maybe Trenton was the one contacted him that he was the one that she trusted but of course he wouldn't know anything about hacking or anything so it'd be quite kind of dumb to do that but I don't know I thought that he would bring up something like that and they would get more into Elliot would get more into what Trenton was really doing what was really happening but none of that happened and it's all just a waste of time so um so then you know, he decides not to kill himself, and this is something that I, I totally did not buy. Uh, it, it just it seemed, again, it seemed like another cliche. Oh, I found the light and found a reason not to kill myself. And the whole him going to, um, you know, Mobley's brother and, for, and hacking him and forcing him to do a funeral. I don't know. I, I know that the showrunners are trying, were wanting me to feel try. Oh, great. Elliot's awesome, but that's not how it felt. It just felt kind of empty, really. It's like, what? <laughs> did you see him forcing his brother to say nice things about Mobley? Like, how is that really a win? I, I don't know that, that that's really a win. And nobody, and everyone still thinks he's a terrorist, and so no one's really going to want to uh, commiserate this. They're all going to be like, why you praising this terrorist what elliot really needs to do is clear mobley's name uh, forcing his brother to, to throw a you know memorial service does jack shit so i don't really that wasn't the win that the episode wanted me to think it was and also i don't know yeah just the whole thing about oh you know i'm gonna i changed my mind I'm not gonna kill myself and it Plus, all right, this is what makes it really bad. The, his clothes being dumped out right in front of him. Oh, are we meant to believe that actually happened? That it was just randomly, the dump truck just comes down and randomly? Or is this maybe, is this the Dark Army, like, knowing, giving Elliot his stuff back? I mean, that I could buy, but still, it's, either way, I think it's contrived. <laughs> either way, it's just like, oh, here's your stuff back, and, and you can go back to being you again. It's just like, so this is kind of a fake character resolution to me. It's, it's not one that really works. 
in my opinion. But then, of course, the episode ends when he gets actually gets an email from Trenton saying, don't delete me. And that was actually a really touching moment. I almost teared up a little bit in that, that after this journey he went to, as contrived as it was, that <laughs> he was able to actually see this light at the end of the tunnel, that he now has a way to go forward to try to fight against uh, what happened and that's what I hope we see I hope we get and this is what I wanted to see start obviously they didn't want it to start until the final two episodes of the season which is why we get this filler episode so that's fine but <laughs> but the story that of them actually tr starting to fight back against, against White Rose who's and that especially in that last episode scene is all-powerful omniscient from the very beginning of the entire series so as i said i think there needs to be a turning point where that turns around and they start and so they start going against her which they haven't been for the entire show they've been going against e corp they've been going against other people you know whatever fbi has been going against elliot uh they all need to sort of start going against white rose which is what i think the end of this episode is signified that email will have a way to undo the five nine hack which of course would be absolutely you know apathetical to white rose's goal so very exciting to see where that goes out now i have to talk about elliot is the person that trenton trusted really i mean <laughs> there's a lot of speculation because in the last episode trenton said oh i, I you know if anything happens to us when i'll get back this email is going to be sent automatically to someone i trust mobley knows who elliot is why doesn't she just say elliot oh does she really trust elliot i mean at this stage she doesn't know the distinction between elliot and mr robot so she thinks he is mr robot and mr robot is the one who wanted all this to happen he, he wanted the five nine hack so why would she think that elliot would actually use this information to undo the five nine as far as she knows elliot uh wanted once the five nine happen how does she know that he doesn't so why would she trust him so i don't know <laughs> that doesn't really seem to make any sense to me uh, that she is the one that you know he's the one that she trusts but Whatever, that's fine. Um, I'll be willing to see where this episode, you know, where the season goes from here. Um, anyway, so my rating for Don't Delete Me out of 10, I think I'm going to give this a 6. Um, I almost gave it a 5, but I think there's there's some really touching moments. Oh, I didn't talk about the Angela stuff, which is, that was okay too. That was kind of touching, but again, kind of filler. But <laughs> there were touching moments like his conversation with Angela and his conversation with Darlene and, uh, you know, him sort of the, facing the fact that he wanted to kill himself. Like, I thought that was done, that was done well enough to give it a, give an overall positive review of the episode. But... Uh, I can't give it more than this six because of the stuff with the kid was really contrived and the whole uh, resolution felt really fake. I didn't really buy it. And for most part, most of this episode was kind of just filler. But still, I would say a good episode. So six out of ten. So that's it for my review of Mr. Robot Season 3, Episode 8. Be sure to check out my channel as I continue to review episodes of Mr. Robot. Uh, also be sure to check out my channel as I review and many more shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, The Expanse, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.